This thing must have cost a king's ransom when it was new because look at the way it's built. Brass sectors. They even went the extra mile to have a little bit of a counterbalance here so that when you crank it you will not be fatigued. Down here is a little notched uh, stop that can be used to make fine adjustments. I'm not sure how to use that, but there are some serrations along the edge of the index plate here at some point here. I'm, I'm right here. I'm feeling it now, a roughness, almost like a comb, which you might hear that. This, of course, can be loosened and moved in and out to allow you to uh, select a certain circle of holes. So it would move in here. This is a plunger. Even has a little feature here where you can pull it out, twist it, and uh, it will not uh, be in one of the holes. Now at the moment I got this loose, but that does tighten up too. And then there's a screw in here, right through there, that allows you to tighten or loosen these uh, sector arms, which we used to call a spider. And then down here also are the numbers, so you can see how many holes there are in each one of the whole circles. When you loosen these two nuts, it will allow you to swing the entire head into different uh, positions. Right now, of course, it's on zero, but it, this can tilt all the way up to 90 degrees so the spindle is facing uh, the sky or is in the vertical position. Furthermore, there's even a vernier here, which I'm not used to seeing on dividing heads, but there's a vernier here to set it even more accurately than what you could do with, uh, with just the, the marks. So that's kind of extraordinary in itself. Let's look at a few more features yet of the Cincinnati dividing head. If you loosen these two nuts, as mentioned before, now we can tilt the head and I put a wooden stick in here so I wouldn't damage anything, but it can be easily rotated into uh, almost any degree here. You can go over the, uh, the 90 degree mark or the zero mark or straight up. Actually this would be uh, 90 degrees, so you can go a little bit past that, about 30 degrees past. And right here there are complete instructions on how to uh, adjust the worm. Kind of surprised me when I turned that over and, and discovered that. So it can be adjusted to any angle using the little vernier scale here. And then locked again. Or brought back down to this position of zero, which would be probably the most common uh, position that you would use. Use a little magnifier and a good light here and you can get it right on the money, but of course it also could be indicated if you want it even closer. With this head you can divide a circle three different ways. There is direct indexing, which I will talk about first. Then there is plane indexing with the plate here. And finally angular indexing, which I know very little about and I will not cover at this time. But let's talk about plane indexing first. Presently the dividing head is set up to do uh, plane indexing and that is when I crank over here you can see that the spindle is turning. Because inside of here there is a worm and a worm gear, sometimes called a worm wheel. So that has to be engaged in order to do plain indexing. With this knob or lever, whatever you may want to cause, call it, you, it's mounted on an eccentric and when you turn it off the uh, worm is dropped out of the way and disengaged from the worm wheel. Notice how this spins freely now without any movement on the spindle. This knob is used to lock it so that when you start to cut a tooth or whatever it is, you would lock this the same as you would lock a table on a milling machine. 
so that there isn't any possible movement if there's a backlash and there's always backlash. So this is the lock. This is the eccentric to engage and disengage the worm. If you take a look at this exploded view of the dividing head out of the Cincinnati book, you'll see that when you turn the crank here, here's the shaft and it is turning a gear and the same size gear is also right here so it's a one-to-one -one ratio and it's driving this shaft which has the worm. The worm in turn rotates the worm wheel. This is the worm wheel. Now the worm wheel has 40 teeth and that's what gives you the 40 to 1 ratio on this dividing head. All right, let me talk a little bit about direct indexing. Now, notice that uh, we're set up now for plain indexing. That is, when I turn the crank over here, the spindle is turning. So, to do direct indexing, you disengage the worm. And now, the spindle is free to turn by hand. You see? And the index wheel here has no connection at all to the spindle. Now let me take this plate off and show you what I'm talking about. Point of clarification. This is a worm. It's not a gear, it's the worm. And the worm wheel uh, and the worm are inside here. This of course is a I don't know where it came from. It's much smaller than the one that is in here but when I talk about disengaging the worm this is what is getting dropped out and away from the worm wheel to allow this to spin freely. Now I've taken the plate off of here and there were four screws. But when you look on the back of this, this is an index plate as well. And there are three hole circles. And this is pretty awesome. And not all dividing heads have this and the little hardinge does not have it. There are three hole circles and they contain uh, 24, 30, and 36 holes in these three circles. So you can do uh, a great deal of dividing just with these or anything that can be divided into those numbers. Now I deduced or thought that maybe the pin which I'm going to show you in a second was broken off in one of these holes and that's why I took this off to, to see if there was a, a steel pin broken off in one of them and there was not but I, I blew this out and cleaned it off real good and uh, let me show you what it is that goes into these holes to do direct indexing. This is the little uh, pin here that uh, is capable of direct indexing and notice that it's quite intricate in itself and is uh, mounted on the little rack and pinion but it is broken off and that's what I'm going to make in an upcoming uh, video is a new uh, one of these but you can loosen this nut here and in a T-slot raise or lower this to match or align with one of these circles and if you look on here very carefully and it's marked outer circle is 36 holes the middle circle is 30 holes and the inner circle is 24 holes if I was lucky and the job called for cutting a gear with 36 teeth it would be very easy to simply use the direct method here and that would be to raise and lower this to align the pin with the outer circle tighten it like that and then bring that up into the hole cut a tooth then and that can be locked loosened cut the tooth back it off move it up to the next hole bring that in lock it cut the next gear and so on and that is direct indexing. Most simple way to do it because there's no math involved like there is with the index plates. Now what I'm deducing happened someplace along the line is that somebody had this into one of the holes 
and uh, somebody else came along and cranked it over here on the main index plate and broke that pin off. That's probably what happened and that may have been many many years ago as well. And you can see what this uh, piece looks like. We can get it out of there. This is hardened steel but I'm not going to make it out of hardened steel. I'm just going to use drill rod. But there is gear teeth on there. That's a straight uh, gear which we call a rack. And then the end of it is broken off and you can see the crystalline structure of the hardened steel where that got sheared off. So I need to make one of those and there's a hole on this end for a spring. So it is spring loaded. This device here in itself is rather intricate. This is another view of the brown and sharp uh, index plate here for direct uh, indexing. And you can see that there are larger diameter holes, look like about quarter inch, and there's only a total of 24 of them. So there's just one circle there. So that it does not have quite the capabilities of the Cincinnati. And it too, I might have mentioned before, has the little rack and pinion here. But this is all uh, frozen up and doesn't work, but the pin would go in and out. Let's take a look at a couple other ways of, uh, in the shop of doing uh, direct dividing. Most every machine shop including home shops have a little spin index like this and they're quite inexpensive in about the $50 range and they have a, a 5C collet to hold the work but this is a type of direct uh, indexing head because we got a pin right here and it can be inserted into any one of the holes you see here and uh, the lines here are in degrees and using uh, the series of holes here, they act kind of like a vernier. You have many different positions and uh, capabilities of indexing with this, but it is not really suitable for gear cutting. Here is yet another rather simple direct indexing type of device made by Hardinge. It also holds 5C collets, uh, which would uh, could be interchanged and uh, about any type of work size be held there. And if you look here, you will see that uh, there are graduations here and numbers and so on. And we have a little plunger here also that can index. This can be mounted on any milling machine. Again, this wouldn't really be suitable for gear cutting, but it is a possibility for direct indexing. There will be times when your drawing or your project requires you to divide a circle into a certain number of degrees rather than a certain number of parts and that's where we use angular dividing or angular indexing and as you know this is a 40 to 1 ratio so 40 full turns of the crank turns the spindle 360 degrees. Now if you do the division on that you'll see that uh, one turn then, one full turn on the crank will rotate the work or the spindle exactly nine degrees. So carrying that logic just a little bit farther here you'll, you'll know that five full turns rotates the spindle 45 degrees and 10 turns will be 90 degrees and 20 turns 180 degrees and 30 turns 270 degrees and that's all very logical and easy to do but sometimes we are going to divide the circle into a certain number of degrees and minutes and even seconds I'm not going to cover seconds but you can uh, certainly divide the circle into uh, minutes or degrees and minutes uh, using the circles and the circle that you want to use most often for that that is uh, uh, easiest to use would be the 54 hole circle and I've got the uh, pin set on that right now so using this ever important 54 hole circle means that each space from one hole to the next is 10 minutes so each revolution equals 540 minutes or 9 degrees. So 40 revolutions 
times the 540 minutes equals 21,600 minutes, which is the total number of minutes in a full 360 degrees or a full circle. And that the distance between six holes, or six spaces, I should say, equals one degree. So if you got degrees that you're dealing with, just multiply them times the uh, uh, six holes and you're going to move the correct number of degrees if you're using that 54 hole circle. Now that's really all I'm going to say on angular indexing at this time. You will be seeing this dividing head in many videos in the future and I will be doing gear cutting with it as well as using the little hardinge dividing head and I will be covering uh, gear cutting uh, or the geometry and uh, terminology of uh, and calculating of spur gears because we're going to do that so that'll be a separate chapter and then in a chapter coming up I am going to cut a rack so I'm going to make a new rack this little piece here and a rack can be cut on the bridge board but it has to be quite a short rack now it could be longer than this but this rack here is uh, you know less than an inch long there's only five teeth so that can easily be done on a bridge board but longer racks uh, for instance six eight ten twelve inches cannot be done on a bridge board other than with a special attachment which I do not own but watch for the uh, video on cutting this rack which is coming up soon and that concludes this video on the dividing heads